Today we're going to talk about handheld weapon light for EDC or even duty usage. Now this is a light, the Streamlight ProTac uh, 1L is actually probably better catered to EDC because it's a small size and stuff like that, lightweight. It still actually has a good amount of lumens. I, I'm not really sure what the exact number is. I don't want to throw a number out there and then have to be hard, uh, have a hard correction in the comment section, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you already know it and I, I apologize for not doing uh, that much research. Uh, before the video, but this isn't really about uh, lumens. This is just uh, an accessory, if you could, uh, or a prop for the video, so to speak, for an example. So, when you're doing low light shooting, it there is a greater chance of greater harm to you because uh, it's very tactics based. Uh, situational awareness is going to have to be top notch more than the day you have trouble seeing. Therefore, you have uh, you may have more of an emotional reaction to um, things, given the fear a little bit more. So you have to be pretty well trained, pretty well versed in uh, how to handle certain situations, and you have to be very adaptable. So. The handheld light actually allows you to do that much more than um, I would say a weapons light. However, the weapons light should not actually be discounted as far as a carry uh, something you have on a carry pistol or whatever. I I personally uh, prefer them for uh, a vehicle guns and home guns uh, generally uh, speaking. However, there is a lot of times, especially this time of year in Alaska. Now, being the winter time, we don't get very much light. We maybe get four hours of sunlight, if not uh, less, or until we're basically in a low light setting and we're going to have visibility issues to where when you're uh, an, in a low light setting, you basically can do not have the depth perception or the um, actual detail to actually be able to make out a lot of good things and have very good resolution with your vision. So. Uh, according to certain you know statistics in biology, uh, you're actually in the classification of legally blind if you have 2020 vision. 2015 not really going to make much of uh, a difference if you have that good of vision. So, anyways, I want to just talk about the weapon light and the uses and stuff like that. Um, uh, different things that I've actually noticed, and I'm not going to talk about you know positions, techniques, and stuff. That'll actually be a separate video. But this is just a concept of using a handheld flashlight for EDC or tactical uses. Of course, I don't really have um, a flashlight that I'm willing to uh, whip out for you know tactical uses, but I'll do the demonstration uh, here for for that uh, using this little light, which I would still cross over in certain. Uh, cases, but a handheld light you should be getting as many lumens as possible, and I think that it should have good features that uh, allow you to do a lot of different techniques. You want to train with it, you want to be able to do a lot of different techniques if possible. However, if uh, you get in, it, you actually get in a training course where you're actually challenged in order to apply these techniques, you might find, like as I did, that the uh, syringe technique. Uh, it actually does not work very well because you're trying to do the best you can to have two-handed shooting uh, capability where you're still able to have isometric pressure and for me I get the flashlight against the bone and I'm able to compress the pressure switch uh, good enough and being a streamlight it actually has a strobe setting if you double uh, uh, double press it or uh, uh, double click the uh, uh, pressure pad and if you do it three times it, get, it puts it in a low light setting but when I actually have it in a syringe technique I'm not actually able to you know actuate it very easily against the bone and I it's very hard to do that unless I take my hand off the grip but put an isometric tension down uh, I have to put the grip uh, downwards and even with a little bit of assistance like uh, one of those little pads that helps retain it and sticks out a little bit so it can go between the fingers I still have an issue because there are these uh, little prongs at the back, these three little prongs actually kind of obstruct my ability to hit the pressure pad. There are other lights that will take that away, but I, I found that they're generally a bigger size. However, it's not out of uh, my, I, I'm not below the, I, I'm not below the, uh, <clears throat> uh, or above the um, a willingness to actually shave down those little areas if I actually feel like it's necessary as I go through more and more training for it because I've been in low light situations before I know how that works I know the general functions of spot checking and stuff like that and you know silhouetting uh, how to silhouette things stay stay out of silhouettes and stuff like that I do have some uh, practical uh, low light uh, uh, you know flashlight um, 
um, experience, but most of it was weapon mounted in general. And uh, cross using uh, using NVGs, uh, a PEC 14 on one side, you're using that for you know when it's dark, and then you have this eye for. Uh, or this eye, I use this eye for, uh, you know, white light or whatever, and you basically just block it out, close this eye from your night vision, um, and use this one for weapon lights, and just keep one eye open. But anyways, that's a totally different subject. So with a handheld, it gives you a lot more freedom than I actually had in my practical uses, and it's actually very tactical, uh, a very tactics-based uh, concept. You've got to actually know... Um, where to shine the light, you need to be able to deal with different situations. Uh, you got to be able to actually do manipulations, reload, reload the pistol with the uh, light in it without causing a, uh, a negligent discharge, if you will, of the flashlight, like clicking it on. And uh, I noticed that some people uh, wanted to actually um, put this uh, light in a syringe method if it would, they were going to this and then they were going to the syringe method in order to do manipulation. I did not find that actually to be very good because my, my finger would slip off and I would actually ignite it. And I saw actually the instructor and some other people actually accidentally doing this. So what I did is I, I just kept it like this and I just held it like so. And when I was doing my reloads, I didn't have any problem with that. Even with my small hand, I was able to reach around, manipulate everything and just hold it in my, my thumb and it was good to code. This is just an example of what I had to do to adapt to the situation. Now, one of the things I would say if you're going to be having a, if you're going to be setting yourself up with flashlights and stuff like that, still get used to get using uh, one hand and firing. Get good at shooting one hand and controlling that uh, recoil and being able to get relatively fast follow-up shots and accurate follow-up shots. Because one thing I found is in using handheld uh, light from, you know, a neck index or FBI method if you know like if it's raining out snowy out or uh, kind of foggy you'll probably want to offset and cast out towards the target and use these different methods in order to uh, get a good lighting distract uh, your opponent stuff like that there's different tactics that you have to be aware of and adapt very quickly to that's why I say it's very tactic based and you need to be very versatile adaptable and you need to have the piece of gear that actually helps you in most situations and handheld and weapon lights are good but let me go ahead and get a pistol with a weapon mounted light, kind of as a comparison. So, say you uh, you just pull out your pistol uh, and you checked on something, you just see something suspicious, and then you have to pull out your pistol. Are you going to drop your handheld light uh, and then just switch to your weapon mounted light? I don't think that would actually uh, be a good, efficient use of time. See, if you identify something, and I would not, you know, drop my handheld light and go to the weapons light. I would actually retain that handheld light and just go one-handed. You can respond a little faster. Maybe if you get to cover, you can throw it in a pocket and then activate your handheld light and take care of the situation from there. Uh, some There's different ideas behind it, like ho just holding down the uh, pressure switch until you're done uh, shooting and then, uh, then release it instead of having to click it on, click it off. Uh, and stuff like that, but even with a weapon mounted light, a lot of the reason a lot of uh, people like weapon mounted lights is uh, so they can control recoil and also if they have to do something with their other hand, you can't do that with a flashlight and get good, um, uh, get a good uh, positive ID because PID, positive identification, is actually almost everything, especially in low light. You need to identify your threat, you need to be damn sure. Whether you're military law enforcement or a civilian, especially if you're a civilian, Every round you fire, the situation is really going to dictate whether you go home with new or you go to a new home with uh, some fancy jewelry, nice shiny jewelry. Uh, you might, anyways, but it'll determine the rest of your life uh, what you do. So you need to be very wise. You need to actually have these skills. It'll set you up. It'll make you more efficient, and I think it'll set you up for success a lot better. It'll, you need to be a good thinker when you're in these situations and be able to control yourself. So. With a handheld light, it helps you be a little more versatile. You're actually able to check some things. So let me go ahead and get that flashlight off the ground. As I was saying, the handheld light uh, allows you to be a little more versatile. You know, basically illuminate your uh, your room or whatever. A lot of people think giving away your position, but again, this goes back to tactics, which are basically getting the most reward with the least amount of drawbacks. You, that's kind of the basic thing about having tactics is being able to analyze and, and gamble effectively, kind of like blackjack, playing blackjack with uh, with the situation to see how you could get things to 
least likely to end up in failure or uh, get the most reward, if you will. So, uh, generally speaking, this allows you to be a little more versatile. You don't have to pull out your gun in order to get light. You don't have to play a guessing game in the dark because if you're going to pull out your gun and you have a weapon mounted light and you were able to identify that something's a threat, then why do you need the light in the first place? You didn't actually have good uh, positive identification if you've decided to pull out your gun and you're putting the light on there anyway. Some people would say, well, it's just so I can make more accurate hits. If you're able to actually make a positive identification, I would argue that you've already got enough light to actually get accurate hits. That's just my argument. Also, this goes down to gear like night sight, but that's a, that's a gear discussion. This isn't about the principle. The handheld light lets you get good positive identification, and it is a little bit more versatile. There are some sacrifices, such as being able to keep a target illuminated while you're doing one-handed things, like some people have talked about, oh, getting children and picking them up and doing that. I would not want to pick up a child, a baby, or anything like that and make them into a, a relative human shield, if you will. Um, if you're living alone and you have children in another room, I would shelter in place, just saying. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, use a hip bump if you're out in public, get people out of the way, body, uh, hit them, uh, shoulder bump them, get them out of the way of, uh, get them out of harm's way, yell, you know, whatever while you're focusing on the threat, keeping good situational awareness around you, and stuff like that. So you can deal with a handheld light. I wouldn't do it in the home. I wouldn't do it, uh, you know, for a vehicle when you already have that stuff out and you probably have headlights to make good uh, positive identification of the threat and they move out and you have to basically engage a moving, uh, someone who's moving or advancing out of your headlights, uh, stuff like that. But uh, it allows you the versatility to go into something uh, prepared, you know, uh, from the vehicle or in the home or whatever. That's just my opinion, but the handheld light could still be used in the home if you have a gun that you really shoot well with that doesn't have a rail, or you just don't have a weapon amount of light. You can still get by with this. There's ways around things. Uh, it, there's nothing really perfect about low light shooting, um, but it does take a lot of adapting. There's no one method that works for everything from what I've noticed. When the need arises, you want to be more prepared than not prepared. But of, of course, with everything else, there's sacrifice, there's opinions throughout the community, and that's fine to listen to that, but I would recommend that you actually take training courses, and take training courses from more than just one source, unless that source actually goes to a lot of other uh, sources and actually shares that with you. Uh, I've got a good experience with a trainer around here that actually you know, goes out and gets additional training, is very... Uh, big on sharing information and stuff like that lets us uh, figure things out for ourselves and encourages practice. That's what you want to look for, I think. So anyways, get some training, try this stuff out for yourself, find what works for you, and uh, do what you can to actually get into a low light setting to kind of practice this stuff and work on your tactics and stuff like that. Be, be pretty self-aware. And I think a handheld light is actually a good option <laughs> Not really saying instead of, but in addition to a weapon-mounted light or uh, as almost a required tool more than a weapon-mounted light. Uh, so, you know, good positive identification without pulling out your gun. Uh, also, just being able to be aware, having that peace of mind that you can actually get good lumens, a good uh, idea of what's out there without, you know, committing a crime. So anyways, uh, thanks a lot for watching. You guys have a good one. Don't be afraid to uh, leave comments below.